What's the mountain in your life? What's the mountain that needs to be moved? What is the mountain in your life that you are saying, it's never moved, it hasn't moved, it's not going to move, it never will move? What's the problem that's too big to solve? What's the, what's the challenge that's too big, seemingly too big for you to take on? Is it too big for God? God is in the mountain moving business, but you must not doubt. Jesus said, if you have faith like a mustard seed, God can move the mountain. Nothing will be impossible for you. A little bit of faith in a great big God is more than enough. God is more than enough. We want to focus on how big the mountain is. Jesus said, get your eyes off the mountain. Just focus on having a little bit of faith. Moving mountains. Can I ask you this question? Have you ever moved mountains? Have you ever done the impossible? And what mountains would you like God to move now? You know what I find? We all believe in God, but we don't do much mountain moving. I want you to look at what I consider to be one of the greatest promises of God found anywhere in Scripture. Let's read what the Scripture has to say. Mark chapter 11, starting at verse 22. And Jesus answering, saying to them, have faith in God. Now I have that underlined and highlighted in my Bible. Uh, remember, it's not us. It's not having faith in us. It's having faith in God that makes everything change. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye so receive them, and ye shall have them. Now he wasn't talking about rearranging the topography or the geography of the area. He was talking with a figure of speech that we still use to this day. They used this figure of speech when something was so foreboding, so impossible, it was ridiculous to think anything could be done about it. Now we in our speech still use this. We say, I'm under a mountain of worry right now, a mountain of debt, a mountain of concern, a mountain of torment. And God says, I am the mountain moving God. Well, God says, I'm inviting you to be a mountain mover. God wants you to live with such an audacious, bold faith, a mountain moving declaration of faith that comes from your lips that causes the world around you to marvel. How does that happen? It starts with the words you speak. Mountain moving faith speaks. Mountain moving faith also though, prays. Mountain moving faith prays. Because I think we have to back up here and say, okay, where does the fuel for mountain moving faith come from? Where does the fuel for mountain moving faith, where will it come from? What will ignite the flame to believe God in a way that everybody watching you would say, that's foolish, that's unreasonable. And you can stand and go, no, the mountain will move. Where does that, where does the fuel for that come from? Look at verse 24. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be done for you or it will be yours. If your words aren't faith filled, then you need to back it up and go, how much time am I really spending with God? Because the more time you spend with God, the more faith filled your words get. This is why Jesus again and again and again talks about the importance of asking. So you go to Matthew chapter seven, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and it will be open for you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, it will be opened. Or which one of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? 
Then you go to John's gospel. And in John's gospel, Jesus again and again and again talks about asking, John 14, whatever you ask in the name, in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Here's the thing, when you don't ask God, it, it diminishes the glory that God gets through your life. Take stock of that for a minute. But he gets glory through you bringing your need to him and saying, God, I recognize that you're the one who can meet this need. That glorifies God. It makes him look mighty. It makes him look awesome. It makes him look powerful, which he is. But it puts that on the screen of your life. John chapter 15, verse seven, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Chapter 16, until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, 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 and you will receive that what? That your joy may be full. Two results of you asking that Jesus points to in John. God gets glory and you get joy. God gets glory and you get joy when you ask your good, perfect, holy, heavenly Father to do what only He can do for you, it glorifies Him and it fills you with joy because it reminds you of how good He is, how good He is, that He will marshal the resources of heaven to provide for His children. Jesus says it's prayer. It's prayer that fuels a faith-filled declaration because public power always follows private prayer. Public power always, always follows private prayer. This is true in the ministry of Jesus. It was true in the life of the apostles. It's true throughout the pages of scripture and it's true in your life. Much with God, he's much with you because he wants mountains to move in your life. He wants it to happen. First of all, if you want to move a mountain, Jesus said, pray. He makes it very clear. He says, you need to pray and ask for these things from God. A lot doesn't happen because we never ask, we don't believe. Mark 6, 46, and when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. Before you can move mountains, you need to have a mountain of prayer. You need to be living a life of prayer if you want to move mountains. The day you want to move a mountain cannot be the first day you start praying. He said, Matthew 7, 7, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. Or to him who knocks it will be opened. And the words there, asking, seeking, knocking, it's talking about continued effort. Or what man is there among you whose son asks for bread? Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those that ask him? So notice, ask, 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 seek, seek, knock, knock. Pursue these answers, these miracles. So we need to pray, uh, not only in the good times, but in the bad times. But we need to have lives of prayer. That's one of the keys. And you can have an earth-shaking experience and move mountains. Now the devil's gonna try to get you stopped from the get-go because the devil's not worried about us till we get prayer rolling. And then the devil's defeated and there is nothing more powerful than prayer. It's the most powerful thing in the universe because it moves the arm of the Almighty, the God with whom nothing is impossible. But he says, here's the first key. Number one, you gotta ask. You gotta ask. Be thou removed. Whoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed. Verse 24, therefore I say whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe. You gotta ask. What are you asking for that's out of bounds, possibly? Something you say, only God could do this. Only God. What exactly are you asking for? Now he says, you have not because you ask not. Has anybody ever watched you or me ask in faith believing for the impossible? Or are we just too comfortable playing it safe? Do you have any idea how powerful an ask is with God? Ask. 
You want to move mountains? Ask. What would you like to see God do? When we get to heaven, I'm afraid the Lord's going to say to me, David, you asked for so little. Didn't you read these passages? Do you not understand? I'm all powerful. Listen to what the scripture says. Matthew 19, 26, with men it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Mark 9, 23, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Mark 10, 27, with men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Luke 18, 27, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. God says, there's nothing I can't do. I am all powerful. What do you want in your marriage? How do you want your life to be used? Ask, ask in faith believing. He said, if you have the faith of a grain of mustard seed, that'll do it. You can't do it, but he can. How can this mountain ever move? How can this complicated situation ever change? How, can, how, how could this ever be turned and become a blessing? How can, how can this be? How? It's, it's a question that's been asked probably a billion times. How? How can this be? How, how can this be done? How can I get through this? How is this ever going to, how is this going to work out? How will this ever be changed? How? God knows how. It's profound, but simple. As mind boggling as it seems to us, he knows how. He knows how to do what we can't do. He knows how to make happen what we can't make happen. What is impossible with us, He knows how to do. God knows how to do miracles. I don't know how to do miracles, but God does. He knows how to give victory when we can't see how. He knows how to provide when we can't see how. Don't worry about the how. He knows how. Even something never been done before, God knows how. He's done a million firsts. He's done millions of never been done before. Think about it. Millions of never been done before. You name it, he knows how. He knows how to set you free. He knows how to forgive. He knows how to give you a brand new life, completely forgiven of sins. He knows how to be there with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He knows how to make life good again. God is bigger than my circumstance. He's bigger than who I am. I will trust him even though you can't see how, he knows how.